everyone and welcome to Mariana Mass Books. My name is Mariana and this is going to be my Reading Women Challenge 2021 mid-year wrap-up. <laughs> Between this and my last one that was a freak out tag, the titles for my videos have been a mouthful. Welcome back if you are here from my last video. Thank you so much for all the welcomes to Booktube. If you watched the last video, you know that this is my second video ever. So thank you for so much for all the kind comments and for all the welcome uh, messages and everything. But yeah, this is going to be, as I said, my uh, mid-year wrap-up for the Reading Women Challenge. 2021. The Reading Women Challenge is a year-long reading challenge um, created and run by the Reading Women Podcasts and the objective of the challenge as its name suggests is to read more women. As I said it's a year-long challenge. It has 24 prompts that you can complete during the year. Today I am not going to mention all 24 prompts. Today I am only going to mention the prompts I have already completed or I am currently reading. Um, and then I'm going to do a video with the rest of the prompts with the books I am planning to read for those prompts. So the first prompt I'm going to talk about is prompt number two and it is uh, to read a book written by an author from Eastern Europe. So for this one, I am currently reading The Museum of Abandoned Secrets by Oksana Savushko, which I mentioned um, in my last video. And I am also going to read Thank You for Not Reading by Dubravka Ubezik. I'm sorry, Oksana Savushko is a, a Ukrainian author and Dubravka Ubezik is a Croatian author. The next prompt is a book with a protagonist older than 50. And for this one I read A Feast or a Heart by Christine Eric Zottier, uh, who is an Icelandic author. I only gave three stars to this book. It's very interesting. It, 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 the whole book is a very interesting story about an older woman who is a prop designer and creator. She creates props for movies, TV shows, etc. And um, in, I was really liking it, but then the ending was kind of like, uh, it left me wondering. I, I don't know, but yeah, the, the ending didn't do it for me. It's one of those books where I don't know if I didn't like it or if I am too dumb to understand it <laughs> because it's won a lot of awards and a lot of praise and I didn't understand why. So yeah, that's uh, that's um, A Feast or a Heart by Christine Eric Zotir. The next prompt is we read a favorite book, which is prompt seven and I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen and I read in audiobook format and it was narrated by Josephine Josephine Bailey. I gave this one five stars. Um, if, if I'm going to be completely honest, it, it's more kind of like a four-ish star for me. I, I, <laughs> I gave it five stars because I've always loved Pride and Prejudice and I, I mean it's really good. I just expected something else from the way that everyone speaks about the book. So it was more of a four-ish stars um, just because I expected more. Then prompt nine which is read a book by a neuro neurodivergent author. For this one, I read The Brightest by Helen Huang, which is a romance that I loved, a contemporary romance where the main character is um, autistic, he's neurodi neurodivergent, and the author is neurodivergent as well. I really loved it. I listened to an audiobook narrated by Natalie Wu Seller, who is 
becoming one of my favorite narr narrators. I also listened to the whole Poppy World trilogy narrated by her and I love her narration. There is also another book I would like to read for this prompt. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to finish all the prompts and then if I have more time, if I finish them before the end of the year, I am going to go over the prompts again and read um, the ones that I, ha I still have books that I want to read from. I love the Reading Women Challenge but it's the worst for my want to read list because um per prompt i read one book and then i add a thousand more to my want to read list so for this one i want to read also a kind of spark by l mcnichol um, which is a middle grade that just sounds amazing prompt number 10 was reading a crime novel or thriller in translation for this one i read drive your plow over the bones of the dead by polish author Olga Tokarczuk. This one I gave five stars to. There is a reason why Olga Tokarczuk has won the Nobel Prize. I'm just going to say that. Then the prompt 11 is read a book about the natural world. About the natural world. <laughs> For this one I read Fathoms, A World Inside the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. Rebecca Giggs is an Australian author and I listened to this in audiobook narrated by Shiromi, uh, Shiromi Arcirio who is also Australian and it was a very good narration. I gave the book five stars. Excellent book, excellent audiobook. The next prompt was a young adult novel by a Latin X author. For this one, I read The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo and I read it in audiobook, which is narrated by the author. I gave this book five stars. You need to read this book, but you need to read it in audiobook. If you are at all interested in reading The Poet X or any of Elizabeth Acevedo's work, I implore you to listen to it in audiobook. Elizabeth Acevedo is a slam poet, so you can just imagine the, the, the power of her audiobooks. Next prompt, <laughs> oh, I don't know, did I say I gave it five stars? I don't remember if I said it, but I think just the way I talked about it should let you know that I gave it five stars. The next prompt was, a poetry collection by a black woman. Uh, for this one I read, there are more beautiful things than Beyonce by Morgan Parker. Um, I gave it three stars. I thought I was going to love this collection, but I think that these poems were not for me. I think that I lacked a lot of cultural context to um, understand most of the poems uh, because it's a lot about pop culture she she seems like a brilliant poet <laughs> like I, I want to read all of her poetry collections i love all the titles the themes unfortunately her poetry wasn't for me but um still check her out because she seems like she has amazing work so because i didn't really like this poetry collection and because i had many many poetry collections i wanted to read for this prompt i am also going to try to read teaching my mother how to give birth by warson shire the next prompt prompt 15 is um a book with read a book with a biracial protagonist and for this i am reading stubborn archivist by Yara Rodriguez Fowler. Quick random fun fact about me. <laughs> 10, 11 years ago in 2009, I had a brain surgery uh, to remove a, a, a brain tumor. And I'm not going to go into detail, but <laughs> um, part of the affectations after the surgery was my speech. So I needed speech therapy for a long time. It was very successful, except for the fact that I can't 
roll my r's anymore so last video i told you i'm from mexico and you know that we roll our r's so for example my name mariana i, I don't pronounce it correctly and i'm saying this to you just because i feel um weird pronouncing uh, the author's last name as Rodriguez instead of rolling the first R which I'm guessing that's how uh, one would say it uh, even in Portuguese but Stubborn Archive is by Jara Rodriguez Fowler who is a British 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 Brazilian author and the protagonist of this book is also British Brazilian, English Brazilian. I am currently reading this one but it's very interesting. I love books that play with structure or grammar or language and this one does that. <laughs> the next prompt was prompt 16, a book featuring a queer love story and for this one I read the fantasy, military fantasy novel The Unbroken by C. L. Clark that actually features multiple queer relationships. Then the next prompt is a book with a rural setting. For this one I read The Clergyman's Wife by Molly Greeley. This one is the story of Charlotte Lucas from Pride and Prejudice and I read it precisely after rereading re Pride and Prejudice. One thing I didn't mention when I talked about Pride and Prejudice is that my favorite character was Charlotte Lucas, not Lizzie Bennet. So um, I, I really wanted to read this book and I listened to it on audiobook narrated by Susie Riddle. It was so also a great narration i gave this book four stars and i really recommend it this is one of those prompts where i want to revisit it after i finish the all the prompts because i also want to read there are many others i want to read for this specific prompt but the one highest on my pr priority is the hired girl by laura amy schlitz which is a middle grade written by the same author that wrote my favorite book of this year that was Amber and Clay. The next prompt was read a book by a um, read a book with a cover designed by a woman. I love this prompt. As a graphic designer, I think this was my favorite prompt in the challenge. So I have read many books with covers designed by women, but I chose two to count for the challenge. I chose two middle grade books. I love middle grade covers. The first one is A Dash of Trouble by Anna Mariano. And that one, the cover art was done by Michelle Ortega. The logo design was done by Jesse Gang. And the cover design by Sarah Nicole Kaufman. So a, a team of, of, of women, including the author, obviously. Then uh, Amber and Clay, precisely, uh, which was written by Laura Amy Schlitz. And the illustration and cover design done by Julia Iredale or Iredale, I don't know. Next, it was a book by an Arab author in translation. So this one I doubled up with the Invisible Cities project and I read The Q by Basma Abdel Aziz. Uh, who is an Egyptian author. The most interesting thing to me was that it is a dystopian novel set in Egypt written by an Egyptian author but it could easily be written by a Mexican author set in Mexico and not be a dystopian novel but an actual real life contemporary novel. That was the most interesting thing to me. I'm just going to say this. The dystopian element is bu bureaucracy. It doesn't that sound like the most interesting thing? Like it's not like a regular dystopian. It's a very realistic dystopia, which was, yeah. The next prompt was a book by a trans author. And for this one, I read the subtweet by Vivek Shreya. I read this one in audiobook and it was narrated by Nisha Auja. I gave this book four stars. It's very good. Vivek Shaya also has a poetry collection 
called um, Even This Page is White that I really want to read. And um, she also has a, a memoir called I'm Afraid of Men, something like that, that I really want to read also. And finally, a non-fiction book focused on social justice. And for this one, I am currently reading Care Work, Dreaming Disability Justice by Lia Lakshmi Piepsna Saramashina. I'm listening to in audiobook and it's narrated by the author. This book is so good. It's so good. <laughs> As I said previously, uh, years ago I had a brain surgery. I've had many sur surgeries since then because I have a condition that I'm not going to go <laughs> into the details because it's very complicated. But what I'm trying to say is that um, I uh, live with many health conditions that impact my life on a daily basis. Since the fact that I have to I don't know, call a hotel when I'm going to go on vacations to let them know of special needs that I have to regular stuff like taking a shower, you know, it impacts me every day. So this book, I can relate to so many of the things that, that she talks about, such an important book because there is really, really a lot of ignorance in the topic and when i say ignorance i mean that that it's very difficult to to know and understand what it's like to live with a disability with an illness with uh, chronic health conditions so it's important to read more about that because there are things that you don't even imagine that affect someone uh, that do and and maybe uh, there are ableist behaviors that you do um, that you don't even know about because it's difficult to know so I don't know I just I really recommend this book I have to say because this is important she uh, uh, she focuses on um, queer and people of color who are disabled this is important because she talks about how they are marginalized because of because they're queer they are marginalized because they are of color and they are marginalized because they have a disability so they have to live with all of that and she talks a lot in this book about how not not easier because the, i'm not saying that white people with disabilities live an easy life but easier than people of color or queer people very important book uh very good i am predicting five stars for this book so that's it those are all the prompts that i have either finished or i am currently reading i am going to do as i said a separate video for all the prompts that i have not yet completed and um, the books that i am planning to read for those prompts if you don't know or hadn't heard of the reading women challenge i am going to link it down below check it out it's a really really great challenge it's really fun it's really interesting and it has honestly changed my reading completely i think then i'm going to do another tag just because my channel is new and i think tags are a good way of getting to know people i'm going to be uploading bi-weekly for now so um every few every other thursday <laughs> That, that's it that's the way to say it every other thursday i'm going to be uploading but yeah that was it for today thank you so much for watching and for listening to me ramble on about books and about everything let me know in the comments if you're doing the challenge what what books have you read what books you are planning to read so thank you so much for watching and i will see you in two weeks with my next video.